Okay, here we are again working on a 1992 Toyota Camry with a 3-liter V6. And what I'm doing today is I'm trying to, to attempt to retrofit the air conditioning system from the older R12 Freon to the newer R134A Freon. I've done a lot of research online and reading up uh, on some of the processes involved. And interestingly enough to me, uh, a lot of the uh, things and features that you have to pay attention to are very, very similar, if not exactly the same as they were for the old R12 Freon. Uh, just kind of a, a rule of thumb, air conditioning systems can be very dangerous and really should only be worked on by folks that are certified in the area and or have uh, extensive experience uh, with them. Uh, there's a lot of inherent danger with these systems. I was actually certified in mobile air conditioning systems servicing uh, some years ago when I was a professional mechanic. So for the purposes of this uh, little video, I just wanted to point out a few things that I've learned with regard to some of the newer things that I'm seeing as compared to uh, the older R12 systems. And by no means is this a complete video on, on how to do this stuff. But if any of you are doing some research, maybe some of those little tidbits of information will help. Essentially what I'm doing here is I'm actually evacuating the system. The air conditioning system is closed and its main enemy, as with the R12 Freon systems, is moisture as I was trained. And so essentially sucking a closed system down to a vacuum or a negative pressure uh, for an amount of time uh, basically breaks down molecularly the, the makeup internally and it breaks down the moistures and moisture molecules and they are then uh, sucked out of the system and through this vacuum pump. So let me uh, just kind of show you this. Um, here's the suction device. It's actually a little vacuum pump that I just bought. It's a 2.5 cubic, cubic feet per minute uh, unit from Harbor Freight. Got a really good deal on it. Making a little bit of oil there. Um, that's not uncommon for for these, I recall working in the shop, oil getting everywhere on our vacuum pumps. Um, and they do need to be added, oil needs to be added to these things just about every time you use them. So essentially, this, uh, coming from uh, the AC system, uh, both the low side and the high side, coming up into this manifold system, uh, it's being sucked out and evacuated through there. Um, you do want to pull a vacuum. Here's, here's a new gauge set that I got, and we're currently pulling about 20 uh, units of measure under the zero there. Let's see if I can point here. We're looking at this inside dial where my fingernail is, there's a zero. Positive pressure would be this way, negative pressure is this way, or vacuum. We're pulling about 20. Uh, I came from Flagstaff where, where I lived uh, a long time at a higher altitude and usually did this during the summer when it was warmer and we would actually pull a greater vacuum. I believe, if memory serves, may not be correct, but as you uh, are physically closer to sea level, your, your amount of vacuum that you can pull actually will be less. And I am at a lower altitude than I was accustomed to. On the high side, or the red, I am also seeing a negative pressure there. Uh, uh, basically beyond that, worthy of mentioning on this 134A type system, um, this is an old R12 system and I'm retrofitting it, but uh, you have to actually adapt the connectors and there's you can't really see the adapter because that's a service valve that's on there on the service port and what's worth mentioning here is in all my reading that I did it must just be because I haven't been kept up with this stuff in a number of years but that is actually a valve you have to open and close it on the old R12 stuff you just screw the fitting on and your valving to control the flow through this hose was on these knobs up here well what's different about this for me is that that is actually a valve and it has to be opened and closed and, and the rotation of which is backwards so when you screw it clockwise or down that actually closes it and when you screw it uh, counterclockwise or up that that opens the valve or I may have that backwards if you screw it down um, that opens it if you screw it up or counterclockwise that closes off the valve same thing over here with the high side um, very similar uh, what's really nice about these these uh, the new 130 newer 134A systems they've been in existence a number of years now of course is that the the two connects are different they're not the same and you cannot hook these up backwards whereas on the R12 system is if memory serves um, you uh, you can actually hook them up backwards accidentally um, beyond that once uh, uh, we're going to pull this vacuum for about 30 minutes minimum. I've done some reading, 
I know on the old R12 stuff we, we did it for about 30 minutes or so uh, because you need that amount of time for the molecules to break down and to evacuate. Uh, but on, on the reading I've done, I've, I've read stuff uh, anywhere from you need to pull the vacuum down and just let it suck like that for up to 45 minutes. And in one reading I read online, which I thought was a little ridiculous, um, they wanted you to pull a vacuum and I assume turn the pump off because those things generate a lot of heat. And they wanted you to be able to hold a vacuum for 12 hours, which I, I think is kind of ridiculous. Now what we, what we will do here is once we've pulled this vacuum for about 30 to 45 minutes right in there, I will actually turn the pump off. Uh, just before I do that, I will close these knobs off so there's nothing else coming out of the system. And, but these gauges read upstream of the knob so that the flow goes through the gauge and then through here. So uh, I should be able to shut these off and then we want to see that negative stay. We want to see that stay down. If, it's, if it slowly creeps up, what that means is it's got a leak somewhere. Okay. So beyond that, that's about all I wanted to point out, a few little things. Uh, other than safety features with regarding these vacuum pumps, um, this style does generate a lot of heat. Uh, you want to make sure you use a grounded extension cord. Not You don't want to mess with the uh, or alter any of the power cords or anything like that. Uh, keep, keep all this stuff clear of flammables. And by all means, when you're working on something like this, always have an open garage or an open area with ventilation. Uh, so always watch for fire hazards uh, and that kind of thing. Hopefully this helps a little bit, answers a few little questions anyway. And uh, we'll see how it goes.